Hello, students. Um, this is the um, first lecture of Thursday, the third day, and it's going a little bit slower than I thought. And I'm getting you ready for your um, test, whatever you want to call it tomorrow. And a couple ideas about how we're going to do this. I'm going to have you come into um, a Zoom room, um, probably about eight kids at a time. And I've decided to let you use your notes. So you want to have all your notes here. I don't want you using your book and you can't Google anything. We're going to try and make this just like the test that you can. But you can use any of these notes that we've taken. And you can use a calculator. I'm not sure whether or not the college board has said you can use a calculator. But uh, tomorrow I'm going to let you use one, which means I can use some outlandish numbers. Cannot use a cell phone, but you may use a calculator. And so what you're going to need, the way this is going to work, it went pretty well when I tried this with World the other day. You'll be in a room about eight kids at a time, and I'll be able to see you, and you can see me. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll post your question on Canvas. So you're going to need your computer open in front of you, and you're going to open up the questions. And what I'm going to do, I'm letting you use your notes. I'm, going to, I'm letting you use your calculator. I'm going to put a time limit on it, just like they do. So you're going to have a piece of paper out and you're going to answer the questions, okay? And all the questions are going to come from these reviews that I've been doing, and I will probably do one more this afternoon. Uh, what I intend to do um, is to go out to the old College Board essays and pull up as many as I can that have questions like, um, you know, are going to be on your test tomorrow on topics we've covered. Anyway, let's go ahead and get some more notes in here. All right, the fundamental economic problem is scarcity, okay? And uh, you can just go ahead and write this down. There ain't enough to go around, okay? And uh, you can write this right here, and it arises. We do not have enough resources. So that is the big problem in economics. It, you know, there's, there's not enough. I mean, you guys, some of you have been accepted to three or four colleges that you want to go to, and, you know, but you can only go to one. I mean, I've been to like nine uh, whenever I apply for a new job, which hasn't happened in quite a while. Uh, I have to l l send, uh, whenever I apply to go to college somewhere, uh, I have to send transcripts from all the colleges I've gone to, and it's just overwhelming how many I've got. I think I've been, to, I've never even counted, seven, eight, nine colleges. Um, but that's what I had to do to, you know, try to finish college when I was young and get certified anyway. So, uh, but most of you, you're gonna have to make a choice and there's scarcity. So this used to be the number one question on the AP macro exam was the scarcity question. Clifford still says that in a lot of his videos. You're looking at his videos. Anyway, I would say you don't need to write the rest of this down. It's not a lack of money, it's a lack of resources. We just don't have enough. Uh, and it's uh, a shortage is not scarcity. All right, moving on. Uh, so how's economics used? You can skip all this. I just am trying to go through the basics of unit one. Uh, I want you to write this down. We did it several weeks ago. There's two types of economic statements. They are positive and normative. And I, I may give you now, let me go back to how I'm going to give you essays tomorrow because I stopped myself there. So you're going to have a piece of paper. You can have your notes. You should have your notes. And um, you can have a calculator. And so your phone is going to be showing me what you're doing. Your computer is where you're going to log into Canvas and you're going to look at the questions. And I'm going to time this. I'm trying to make this just like the actual AP exam. And I don't know if the questions are going to be hard or easy. I think they're fairly easy, but that's me. And if you know you all get 100, that's okay. But we're going to try to make this uh, as close to the actual exam as you can. You're going to be able to have notes. I believe, I haven't heard, I believe you're going to be able to use the calculator. What you're not allowed to do is Google things and text people, and they claim that they can catch you if you do that. I don't know. My theory is they're not going to give you, they're going to kind of hammer you for time. And so if you're trying to text with your buddies who probably have a different question, you're going to, you know, if, if I was a really uh, good student and I was convinced I was going to get a five, and I had four or five of my friends who didn't study uh, texting me, I would ignore them. Uh, because I would want to make sure that I got my test done. Anyway, that's what I think is going on. What do I know? So here's the two things. Positive statements. Write this down. It's based on facts. It avoids value judgments. It is, it is what is. 
And the other type is normative statement. And what I'll probably do tomorrow is give you a uh, question or a statement and just have you tell me, is it positive or normative? Now, remember, you're going to have your notes in front of you, but I consider this a pretty easy question. So if you're taking your notes out, which you are welcome to do, you are probably going to run out of time. How much time am I going to give you? I don't know. I haven't written the questions yet. More on that will probably be there in the um, second video. I'm expecting this to take 10 to 15 minutes. A normative statement includes value judgments, what you think ought to be. And here, if you remember, is the mnemonic device I've always used. It's normal to have an opinion. Okay, so if someone says, um, if someone says um, this coronavirus has a death toll anywhere from one to 4%, that is a positive statement. If someone says, um, I think it's pretty clear that this thing is gonna blow over here in the next couple of weeks and it's gonna have been totally overblown, or I think this thing is gonna last till next year and we're still gonna be in our homes self-isolating when 2021 gets here. I think both of those are normative statements, they're opinions, okay? So my rule has always been, if it sounds like a fact, it's a positive statement. If it sounds like an opinion, it's a normative statement. Just remember, it's normal to have opinions. Don't put too much thought into this. Um, I'm not even sure there's gonna be any questions on this this year, but I can't afford to leave anything off because every AP teacher, uh, at least here's my philosophy, having taught four different AP, AP preps in my time. The last thing I wanna hear from my students and my history kids are gonna tell me this, it's just the nature of the beast. Uh, I, I don't want them to tell me, hey, there was something on the exam you didn't go over. So I do not believe positive and normative will be on there, but it's possible it will be, and we just covered it. All right, moving on. Okay, the four factors of production, we did this. It says all four resources can, uh, all resources can be classified as one of the four factors of production. Number one is the land. This would include the water, the sun, the animals on it. If you buy 100 acres and there is a lake on it that is part of land, okay, I will not make these too tricky. I will probably give you a resource. Again, I keep forgetting to finish how I'm going to do the essays tomorrow. What I'm going to do for the eight kids in the room is I'm going to give them, I don't know, six, seven, eight questions. And they're going to take their blank piece of paper and they're going to write the answers down. And then they're going to pick up their phone, take a picture and send it to me. Okay. And I will grade that. And then group number two will get a different set of questions. They may be similar. And I, so some kids may get one of these questions. Some kids may not. Uh, and that's, again, what I assume the College Board is going to do. I, I'm assuming they're going to have 15, 20, 30 different essays, some with just one or two numbers changed. But anyway, and then you're going to send it to me, and I will grade it. And again, if everybody gets an A, fine. Uh, so land. So if you buy uh, 100 acres of land and there's a lake, that's land. Labor. Well, whoever you pay to work there uh, is labor. Capital. Now, again, I told you this before. I use When I hear the word capital, I think of money because I teach AP European and AP World where we talk about capitalism and why is capitalism here? Because some people have the money to invest in businesses. Okay, But here it means productive machinery. So if you see tool tractor, if you remember the pizza example we did, the pizza oven was capital. Uh, the building th that they built was not land, it was capital. Anything made, and I'll, again, I will not be that tricky on it, but anything you're using, the telephone you answer when they call to order a pizza is capital, okay? And some people separate this between human capital and phys uh, physical capital. I don't generally do that. I'm gonna use the machinery example. Moving on, here is the fourth one, entrepreneurship. And uh, I always, and I tell lots of stories when I do this in class, but if I want to make this video short, I need to cut it down here. This is the business sense. And here's your people, Henry Ford, Bill Gates. Who's the guy you're always, the kids are always talking about now, Elon Musk. I don't know much about him, but I, the kids are always talking about him. These, to me, this is just labor. But according to economists, probably mostly capitalist economists, uh, the, the genius behind this is entrepreneurship. Sometimes it's called entrepreneurial ability. I'll take either answer. So uh, anyway, enough about this. This should be fairly simple. Uh, moving on. Uh, we're going to just skip all this. You're going to be writing this stuff down. If I can tell you the answer is profit, that's what they're out for. I hope that's all right. Moving on here. 
opportunity cost. This is major. Uh, if you have two choices, this is the one you give up. So if you have a choice between Valencia and Seminole, uh, the Russells are very, very pro community college. I went to Chipola in Northwest Florida. My wife went to Valencia. My daughter went to Valencia. My son went to Seminole. And uh, both, I had enough money to pay my kids way to college. And both of them got the lower level bright futures. Uh, my daughter really, really, really wanted to go to Florida State because we had a band director here who brainwashed her that Florida State has the best music program. But from what I understand, it probably does. Uh, but we wanted our kids to go easy and, and get in. And we wanted to save money, let's be honest. And so we sent both our kids to community college. We had to deal with them. We'll pay your college if you live at home, go to community college and go to university. And I've got lots of my friends with two or three kids, none of which have graduated from college. Both of ours have. It's not saying we did it right, but the system we came up with worked for us. Uh, but anyway, so my son chose Seminole. What did he give up? He gave up Valencia. So if you have two choices, is one you give up. And the cost is the second alternative. Now, there's a lot of teachers, you know, we're looking at what, how many of our students are participating. And some of our kids are not participating in our online classes. I'm sure, I know, I know some have had tragedies in the family. Some I'm sure have had to move. Some are taking care of their brothers and sisters. Some kids, I think, probably are just sleeping in, decide they're not going to do anything. Uh, and their opportunity cost is, for those anyway, is that they're giving up, at least in AP, the chance of getting free college credit. And of course, um, let's be compassionate. There's all sorts of things going on that are out of people's controls. And certainly most of us now have a feeling of helplessness, but I'm, I'm a lot older than you guys. Uh, this too shall pass. Moving on here. All right, so there's opportunity cost. Now, this is what you're gonna see tomorrow, okay? Something like this, okay? And so uh, here, this is the PPF. And by the way, if you wanna illustrate opportunity cost, PPF is what you use. And remember a bowed out curve like this means increasing opportunity cost. The further you go out there, the more you're giving up. Uh, if it's a straight line, this could be a question too. If it's a straight line, uh, it means constant opportunity cost. All right, so here's the kind of question we would ask, and I'm just gonna let, I'm gonna do this in my head. If we go from B to E now, let's see. So B, you're making 16 guns and 12 butter. If you go to E, you are now making eight guns and 18 butter. So what you gave up, is eight guns. Now check to make sure I did that right. I just did this off the cuff. We went from here to here. It's not what you get, it's what you give up, okay? So just, you might wanna practice this a little bit. Again, we're gonna do, I'm gonna do another video probably this afternoon. And I do apologize that I'm running behind on these. I know some of you like to get up early in the morning, not most seniors I know, and get this done before noon. I'm probably gonna be struggling for a while with these three preps. I actually did most of World and Euros stuff yes, last night. I stayed and were awake, worked late last night so that I told them I could focus on you. All right, moving on. Uh, this is one way to illustrate economic growth. The PPF ships out. If it shifts in, it shows uh, economic um, loss, whatever the opposite of growth is. I'm trying to pick up here so I can get done in 15 minutes. Okay, calculating nominal GDP. Okay, you might want to pause this. You're gonna get one of these tomorrow. All you do is look for C plus I plus G plus X minus I M. Beware other things there that start with those same letters. Uh, uh, consumer spending plus investment spending uh, plus government spending plus exports minus imports, okay? Some people net it out. So be prepared for that. We will probably do some of these in the second video. Got less than 45 seconds. Calculating unemployment. All right, here's what you do. The only thing that matters is the, uh, the unemployment rate is the number of people. I'm going to pause it so I can collect my thoughts. So the formula is the number of unemployed divided by the labor force. This is employed. This is unemployed. Does it count? Does it count? Remember, they're, if they're not looking for work, they're not unemployed. So the, um, the unemployment rate is 1,000 on, on the top divided by on the bottom is 5,000 plus 1,000. And that comes out if you round it off to 17%. Okay, and uh, so be prepared for that. Remember, I'm gonna do a review a little bit later on, probably with some problems to do, okay? And again, I apologize that I'm so slow at this, but what you gonna do? Okay, 